So we're going to go through and go over what it takes to make all of our individual puzzle cube pieces in Inventor. I know many of you have used Inventor. There are several of you who have not used Inventor as well. So this video will be helpful for both of you. Uh, for those of you who have used Inventor, it'll give you some key features that will hopefully make your workflow a little more efficient and help you create parts in a more efficient manner than also a quicker manner. And then for those of you who have never used Inventor, this will give you a step-by-step -step instruction so you can go through, watch it a few times, make sure that you're uh, covering everything and getting all the details and creating your parts in the correct way. Um, one of the first things we need to discuss is additive versus subtractive modeling and also the combination of those two. And this is something we've talked about in class. Um, you've, we've gone through presentation um, and talked about these things. So um, when I'm creating this individual green part, there are several ways that I can make this. Um, I could, as an additive method, I could start and create this L shape in the back side here and extrude that and then come on the front here, create a sketch and add this uh, front cube here. As a subtractive method, I could create the entire rectangular prism for this entire thing and then cut out all these individual spaces that I don't need. And then I could also use a combination of the two where, um, let's say, I create this back rectangular prism, cut out this section, and then come on the front and add this cube. In this case, I think the additive method is going to be the most efficient to create this L shape here, extrude it, and then add this cube on the front. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file um, in order to create this part. So if I go to the iPro button and go to the new, I'm going to create a part file. When I do that, it may take Inventor a second to open up a new one. Um, but what you'll notice is here on the bottom that I have these tabs. So if you have multiple files open, um, whether that's multiple IPT files or IPT files and assembly files we'll talk about later and so on, you'll be able to tab between these and, and work back and forth. So I'm going to be tabbing back and forth just to take a look at the actual part while we're making it. Um, but I'm going to stay here in this tab and we're going to be using uh, the ribbon up here at the top for all of our commands. Um, our browser over here on the left hand side and then also our graphics window here in the center where our graphics will actually be displayed. So I'm going to come up here to the top left corner and I'm going to click start a 2D sketch. And when I do that, it's going to bring up my origin planes. And I, what, if you hover over one, you'll notice that they say XY plane, YZ plane, and then my XZ plane. And you'll also notice here in the bottom left corner that it has all your axes labeled. Um, we're going to work generally when you create a new sketch and a new part file, you're going to want to start in the XY plane. That's not always the case, but for our puzzle cube parts, we're going to start on the XY plane. So I'll hover over that and click on it, and it's going to bring me into a 2D view, and it's going to change my ribbon up here to give me my 2D sketch options. So I have several different ways that I can create this initial L-shaped sketch. Now remember, each of those cubes in your puzzle cube pieces are three-quarter of an inch. Um, and right here in the center of the page, we have our origin, which is our 0, 0 point. And what you'll notice, we are on the XY plane, so now... Um, my Z plane is actually coming out of the screen towards me, and you can see my Y axis and my X axis. So this yellow point here in the center is my origin, and generally that's where I want to work from. So if I click and hold my center cursor button, or scroll wheel button, I'm sorry, on your mouse, you can pan this around, and I like to drag this down here to the bottom corner, because I want to work in this top right quadrant for the most part. And when I create this L shape, I have a couple different things I can do. Um, I could use a line command. Then I can start at my origin, and I can start creating my puzzle cube part, and it would be this back L shape here, which is three cubes and then two cubes on this side. Um, if I do that, I can click here, and you'll notice you'll see that green dot appear, which means you're snapped to the origin, and that's a co or adds a coincident constraint. If I click there, I can drag my cursor around and start creating this shape. So if I drag my cursor up here, I want this to be at 90 degrees, and you'll notice there's a constraint added there. Um, so I can drag my line up here, and then you'll notice that the uh, dimension is highlighted in blue on the left-hand side. So I can just click there, and if it's going to be two cubes tall, I know that's going to be 1.5 inches, and it defaults to inches, so you don't have to actually add your units. And if I tab, not enter, but hit tab, I could tab over and it'll tab to my uh, degrees rating as well. So it's 
once I set the actual length, I can basically make it any degree of rotation or that's that radius. Um, but I want it to be 1.5 inches, so I can either move my cursor until it, it uh, sets on 90, or I could type 90 in, and I'm going to hit enter. And then it, it allows me to continue, so I want to stay at 90 degrees again. This time it's only one wide, so I make it 0.75. Tab, and that's at 91, so I can type in 90 and hit enter. And then do the same thing here, another 0.75 and 90 degrees, hit enter. Uh, this is going to be two cubes long, this line, so it would be 1.5. I can tab over and it's 90 degrees, hit enter. Same thing here, 0.75, and you'll notice that I can drag down here and it will snap to that line. So that's 0.75 and 90, and then I can uh, click back here and it will snap back to the origin, and then I can finish that part. Now if I come in up here and finish my sketch, I have that L shape. But... I don't particularly like using the line command for things like this. There's a more efficient and quicker way, in my opinion. This is not wrong, necessarily, but um, it may take you a little more time than another method. So if I decide on any sketch that I finished it and I don't really like how it's done or I need to make some edits to it, if I come over to the browser on this side, you'll notice that I have sketch one here. And if I hover over it, it highlights my sketch. If I double click on that, That'll allow me to come back here and edit this sketch. So I'm going to select this whole thing, and I'm going to hit the delete key on the keyboard and get rid of everything. And what I'm going to do instead of using lines is I'm going to use the rectangle command. And specifically, if I hit this drop down, I want to use the two-point rectangle. Now, if I snap to the origin again, I'm going to click once and not hold. Just click once and then drag the cursor up. You'll notice it gives me this rectangle with two dimensions. So once again, I can type the dimensions in. I know I want it to be 0.75 wide and I'm going to hit the tab key, and then I want it to be 1.5 tall. Now I have that left-hand side of that L, and I want to create this other side. So once again, I take the rectangle command. Now, instead of snapping to the origin, I can snap to the bottom of this rectangle, click and not hold, but click, and then drag out. And I can uh, create another dimension, which will be 1.5, tab over by 0.75, and hit Enter. Now I've created my exact same shape. It's in two different shapes, but I created the exact same outline much quicker with a lot less typing and a lot less clicking. So now if I hit finish sketch, I have this finished sketch that I can now turn into a 3D part. And in order to do that, we're going to go up to the extrude command in our ribbon. And because I have more than one shape I have to actually select them and I'm going to hit this drop down menu in my extrude menu so you can kind of see this a little bit better but I need to select the profile when extrude and I want to extrude both this one and this one and I want to extrude it to 0.75 which is the diameter of our cube so I'm going to 0.75 and then I'm going to hit OK and now I've created the L shape of my cube now, in order to add this front side here, this front cube, I'm going to use the additive method. And I'm going to go and create another 2D sketch, but I'm going to create it on this front edge here, front face rather. So when I do that, now I want to create that cube right here. Now, once again, I could use the line command and I could come in and start on my origin and create my lines around and dimension them. The quicker method would be to use the rectangle tool and snap to the origin. You notice that green dot there and that coincident constraint. I've snapped to the origin. And I can also drag this up. And if I snap, once again, you'll see that green snap there at that corner. I can snap in. I don't have to put any dimensions in. Just click and I have my shape. Then I can hit the finish sketch and go to extrude once more. And it's the only profile available, so it's automatically going to select it. And then I can change or I can change this if I needed to. It's already set to 0.75. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in as an inch uh, because I want to show you how you can edit an extrusion if you make a mistake. So obviously this thing isn't correct. Um, this front cube is one inch because that's what we just made it. Now if you do this by accident, you don't have to go back and undo and delete and do things like that. If I go over to my browser um, and I hover over my features, which these are these two extrusions, it'll highlight the one or each of them. Also, if I hit the plus icon on the left-hand side, it'll show my individual sketch too. So if I made a mistake in my sketch, I can just double click on the sketch, go back and fix that and finish sketch and it'll update my extrusion. But since I just made a mistake on the extrusion, I'm gonna double click on extrusion and it'll open up my extrusion panel again. And I can just change that to 0.75 
and hit OK and it fixes it. Once you've created your part, you need to color that part. And in this case, this is my green part. So I want to go over to the browser. I'm going to click on where it says part one because I haven't named this yet. I'm going to click where it says part one. That selects my entire shape. Now if I go up to this appearance wheel, which looks like a, a color wheel, I can either scroll through here or I can use my search bar and I'm going to type in green. And it's going to come up with several options. You want to, these ones that kind of look like a room here, which are solid colors, are the ones you want to select. You can do one of two things. The easiest way is just to, if you have your part selected already, you can use the Add Appearance to Document and click, and that'll add that. Or, if you haven't done that, you can click and drag this up here into this menu, which it already has. And then you can add it from there as well, and then close this window. Now, once you have your part done, one thing that's important to make sure is that your front view matches. And if you created it correctly, your front view will match. So if I click on my front view in my view cube, it'll actually show my front view, which should match my hand sketches. If it doesn't, let's say that th I wanted this as my front view and it's labeled as my right. What I can do is right click on my view cube, set current view as and front. Now that changes that to my front view. But once again, I want this side over here to be my front view so I'm going to right click on that set current view as front go to an ISO view and my part is now done